Hey guys, what's going on? Ty Fox here, and in today's video, we're going to be going through my 1 to 300 jewel crafting guide. So, the aim of this guide is to eliminate all the RNG factors that are in some current guides out on the internet. So, I was basically preparing myself for TBC for my main rogue, and I wanted to go leatherworking and jewel crafting. So, the reason I even started to make this guide was because I was looking online. And I was looking through and I could see that there was clearly some points in the current guides out there where RNG would come into it. And I've leveled up engineering on classic about 10 times. And every single time I've used a guide that has RNG factors and it's never gone my way one way or another. So the aim of this guide is to eliminate the RNG factor as much as possible. So I've basically made it so that this guide will maybe require more materials than the other guides, maybe a little bit more, maybe change certain um, items that you're going to go for, but it will be a lot smoother. And once you have all the materials, you won't need to go get any more guaranteed. So I've made it into a Word document here. And obviously this will be in the description below. So you can obviously just have a look at this as well. But the reason I'm doing the video is to kind of talk you through maybe some of the areas that you can go farm some of these materials and talk you through how I came up with everything. So obviously first things first, if you do find this video uh, helpful and you do plan to use it, then I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the YouTube channel and also go follow me on Twitch. That link will be in the description below. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it. So obviously dual crafting, um, you need to obviously have mining as a profession to get all the materials. However, there are some materials that you can just go out and farm um, in the world such as like the, the pearls, um, elements of waters, Vasco Mojo. So let's go through the materials that you're going to need. So copper and rough stone, easy enough to get. Just go around. Um, I went around Elwyn Forest. You can go around Dunmoreau. All those are fine. You can normally, in the when you're farming the copper as well, obviously you're going to need bronze bars as well. So you're going to need to farm more copper. And obviously bronze bars smelt uh, two times from one copper, one tin. So bear that in mind, you don't want to, get 80, um, 80 copper and then realize that you've got 160 bronze, which I have done. So yeah, remember that. <laughs> um, and the tiger's eye and uh, the, the malachite, um, basically those gems will come from you mining the uh, the copper. Um, they won't come from mining the tin though. So bear that in mind, you might have to, the, these, these tiger's eyes and these gems, overall you probably, as you are mining the materials that you need, um, you might not get all the gems that you need from them. But they can drop from open world. You can buy them from the auction house. And I would highly recommend if you're watching this video um, basically on as it's come out. To go check your auction house. Make sure to see if there are some good deals on there. Because these prices will obviously go up. As we go into TBC there will be people who want to do this guide in TBC. And it's going to be some of these gems are going to be a lot more expensive than they probably are now. Um, just because a lot of the gems at the moment aren't used for anything. Or used for very niche things. Um, so that's something to, to bear in mind as well. Um, so that's kind of the basis of the, the start here. Core stone is obviously from tin. Bronze bars you do from tin and bronze. Uh, this, the 40 silver bars, this one's a bit tricky. I, I went to Redridge um, and found that there was quite a few silver veins that were popping up around the place because silver kind of shares its spawn point with tin. Um, so that's kind of where when I kind of dotted in between the two Ks um, that I'll show on, on the map. Um, and also I, loo I looted chests as well. Chests around the area around the knoll camps, um, that kind of thing, because in the chests you can get silver ore or silver bars. So that's always a good idea. Um, and also, obviously, just, ch just check your auction house. You might find that silver ore is cheaper than silver bars. Um, and obviously, if you've got the mining up, then, um, you know, it'll be easy enough to smell that for you. So the 10 small lustrous pearls. This one was, I farmed it, but in reality, I probably just could have gone to the auction house and just bought them. Um, they were starting to go up in price on my server. So I decided to go and farm them and just kind of get a feel for how the farm would go. So what I did is I went to Westfall and basically went down the coast and just farmed the Murlocs. Um, I made sure that I was only looting the clams. Um, and I would probably say it maybe took an hour and a half, maybe something like that. I mean, the drop chance for the pearls is, isn't too good, but because of how fast you just blitzing through them, um, you basically go down the coast in like, five minutes five ten minutes and then by the time you go back up to the start again they're all there again so i was probably quite slow with the farm you could probably do it a lot quicker um and obviously just check your channels um that that was my best 
my best farm for those. Um, heavy stone is obviously from iron. Um, so this is actually quite a good gold farm as well because you're going to be using the heavy stone for this guy, but then the iron ore and iron bars are um, useful for obviously blacksmithing um, as well as obviously making some iron grenades, that kind of thing. So that's some gold making back as you're farming these. Um, the the moss gates, now if I remember correctly, moss gates can come from tin ore in the prospecting. So when you're doing tin ore, you might get the moss gates there. Um, again, if you probably won't get 30 moss gates from farming tin. You might have to look at the ore channels. You might have to go do some um, open world farming of mobs. Um, I managed to have a guildie that had a lot of a lot of these gems anyway. And uh, he was just kind of storing them because he thought that they'd be useful at some point. And I just bought them off him for a good price. Um, so yeah, moss gates, that kind of thing. Obviously, you can... Obviously, with this guide as well, you can farm up on the prospecting side of things. So, for, you, for those of you that don't know, prospecting is a factor of dual crafting, where you take raw copper, or uh, raw ore, so copper, tin, iron, and you basically um, destroy that five ore, and you get gems. Now, you can get one, you can get two, and here's kind of the, the ratios of what you're likely to get. So, if you don't have all the gems, then... And they're not on the auction house or they're really expensive on the auction house then you can stock up on the ore and when obviously prospecting come when jewel crafting comes out you can roll the dice and um you know just see how you get on with the gems it might work out to be cheaper that way for me personally i when the idea of i'm just going to get all the gems now because i didn't want to have the rng factor of me sitting there prospecting you know 200 mythal ore and me just getting unlucky with aqua marines you know something like that so that's something to bear in mind as well. With muscle gates, if there's if they're really expensive on your server, you can just when you're farming tin ore, farm a bit more, keep it on an alt, and then when you get to skill fifty on jewel crafting, you can just start prospecting for the um basically almost a one third chance of getting a muscle gate. The only issue is that with the with the tin is that if you get shadow gems and lesser moonstones, they're not useful in this guide. You might find use for them in uh niche things to level up as you go through. Um but in my guide, you don't really use them. Um, same as the jades and lesser moonstones here. So iron ore, you know, you haven't got the best chance. But then as you get into mithril and thorium, these are pr these are used in, in the guide completely. So these are, if you were going to not buy the gems now, I will definitely stock up on the mithril and the thorium ore and be ready to prospect when you get to the skills to, to help you get through the levels kind of thing. So that's kind of covered the prospecting side of stuff. Um, so where do we get to? So small luxury pearls, yeah, heavystone, yeah, so mithril, um, and true silver. I went to the hinterlands and did a mining route basically around the coast. Um, on my alt that has the mining, I also have herbing. So I added in the two grave moss, uh, two grave moss caves as, as I went through, um, just for a bit of gold farming as I went around, you know, something to do. And true silver obviously spawns off mithril. So in hinterlands, it was really good. There are obviously other ones out there, but this is the one that I chose when I was doing the uh, the farm. Um, and then obviously the citron comes from that. Uh, elemental waters. I went to Arathi Highlands and did the elementals that spawn in the top right area. Um, they have a pretty good spawn. Uh, sp sorry, sp uh, drop chance. And the spawn rate isn't too bad. Um, you can basically kill them all as a level 60 super quick. Wait a couple of minutes, wait for them to respawn, rinse and repeat. Um, I think the the sport, I think the drop rate is like seven, eight percent, something like that on all of them. But you can uh, you can roll high. I got triple drops um yesterday, which is pretty cool. So um the 45 Aquamarines, this is gonna be the killer really at the moment, because in classic they are used for the minor run speed enchant, as well as other things. So I managed to get a good stock of these these drop in in high level dungeons. So if you just roaming around doing some high level dungeons on alts and stuff like that you might be able to grab these as you go um and again that you can get you can get them from prospecting so that's something to bear in mind flask and mojo so what i did is i was while i was in the hinterlands ever so often i would take a break and kill some trolls um and i basically did it in the area where you get the mallet of zulfrak um if you don't know there's a there's a map above um in, and then that from, you can do it from Zulfrak itself, you can do it from various mobs, but this is the one that I chose just because I was already in the Hinterlands. It made sense, do a lap of, do a lap of uh, Mithril, do the Grave Moss, go kill some trolls, rinse and repeat, you know, and it, and it works out pretty well for me. Um, the four Farm Thorium Bars, you can kind of do anywhere for these. Um, I, I did Burning Steps, so that's that was just my choice, just because I like the smaller zone of it, so 
That was my choice, but you can do Winter Spring, Western Plaguelands, you can do Eastern Plaguelands, Silithus, you know, if, you've, uh, if you're a rogue um, and you've got mining, then Silithus is still a good bet. And because Arcane Crystals have come down so much in Phase 6, um, large Thorium veins are pretty much everywhere. Um, you know, they're not, they're not heavily farmed as much as they were, so... Um, 10 star rubies and all the all the gems at the end like the large opals add the rose and diamonds blue sapphires huge emeralds these all come from thorium ore being prospected but you don't need many of them besides the huge emeralds so what you might be what might be worth doing is doing some diamond or east runs with someone um, that has mining and then they get the arcane crystals and you get all the other gems so in their head they're getting the best one right they're getting the arcane crystal which is still worth the most Whereas on the back end, you're getting all the other gems that they don't really care about for your jewel crafting. Just an idea, just a tip. Other than that, check your auction house. At the moment, blue sapphires are probably the most expensive ones um, because they're used in frost resistance gear. All the other stuff should be about five gold each, something like that. But again, check now. Whereas if you wait until TBC, these will be higher. 100% they'll be higher. So bear that in mind with all the, uh, the end game gems. And also bear in mind that with the Star Rubies, they do prospect higher, they have a higher chance to prospect on Thorium Ore. So you'll probably find that if you are stocking up on Thorium Ore at the moment, you will get Star Rubies more than the other ones. Um, and obviously you do get a chance of getting the uh, the new ones as well. Even though it's a 2% drop, you might get might get lucky and get a head start going from 300 to, uh, to 375. Um, the only final thing in here is 10 Heart of the Wild. So this kind of leads on to the Daimor East stuff. 10 Heart of the Wild is super easy to get if you literally just do one lap of the lashes in a diamond east i did it on my paladin but again if you're doing a diamond east run with a buddy um and you're doing this whole thing just kind of say hey can we just do one clear of the lashes just nuke it you'll get 10 hard the wild super easy um, and these might be a good goal farm to stock upon because uh, in most guides they have the 10 hard the wilds um so they might be worth a little bit in the in tbc times as well uh, so that's pretty much it guys in terms of the guide that I can think of in terms of the plan I could run through all of this but it all kind of makes sense um, the only niche things I want to talk about is at the start kind of where you make more delicate copper wire than you probably need to um, and this is mainly so that if on the rough stone statues you roll low um, out of the 10 that you make you should be already above 20 going into making the rough stone statues and then if you need to, you can have three braided copper rings, which are orange level, which will get you to uh, to 30 for sure. This is kind of overcompensating for what you really need to do. Um, other than that, the, in uh, the 120 to 150 range, there is a specific recipe um, that you have to get from if you're Alliance side, Menethil Harbor, or if you're Horde side, Free Wind Post and Thousand Needles. So if you are thinking about doing dual crafting, is that I, I can't imagine it being in pre-patch, but when TVC launches... When you get a free set, go to one of these places, grab the grab the thing, and then you're you're good to go. This was by far the best uh skill to go from one twenty to one fifty. Um, so it is definitely worth getting that farm on. Um, just just go there ever so often. You know, maybe set your hearth to there. Um, and when you're having a break from leveling, just go in there and and get it really quick. Other than that, though, guys, that's that's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty straightforward in terms of uh, of the guys. So. Thanks everyone for watching. Obviously, if you are interested in coming along to my streams, then check out the links below and uh, also join the Discord. Thanks all for watching. Peace out.